Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna be doing something really fun today, but real quick, I just wanna thank you guys so much. We hit 1,000 subscribers on the channel and we're only like 10 videos into this thing. So I just wanna thank each and every one of you guys for subscribing and leaving comments and watching these videos. It means a lot to me. I love you guys and I really appreciate it. So as far as this video is concerned, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I had several people ask me to do some UI design, so I'm gonna give that a whirl today. And I really wanna know if you guys wanna see more of this content. So I'm gonna put a poll at the end of the video, so make sure to check that out and you can vote on whether you do or don't want to see any more UI, web, or app design. But if you guys do like this video, make sure to give it a like. And if we get to 1,000 likes, I know that's a lot, but if we can get there, I'm going to make a full series of designing a complete website from start to finish, just like you would for a real client. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So for the theme of today's video, I thought what would be really fun was to do something about pirates. Maybe we could do something like a pirate recruiting website. So for all of you out there that are looking to become career pirates, this is the website you go to to get some information about what it's like, to see available job openings, and to submit an application to join the crew. This website is going to be run by a pirate organization. And I'm just going to call them the Seven Seas. So I'm just going to start by making a really quick logo for this. So I got this wheel icon. I think we can use that for a base for the logo. And what I'm going to do is just make a circle inside of this, give it an outline that matches the thickness of the rest of the strokes in the wheel. I think what would be cool is to put the number seven inside of the wheel instead of writing out the word. And then we can stick C's right beneath here. And then we'll just cut out part of that wheel. And now I'll just make some minor adjustments and finish this off. I think that'll work for a quick logo. And now we can get on to the website. So this is going to be our homepage, which will be the first thing you see when you visit the site. And as I said, this is a site to recruit future pirates. So as far as content goes, we're definitely going to want the logo, some type of headline, and usually some subtext to go with that. We'll also want a clear call to action, as well as a navigation. So as far as this video goes, we're not going to be designing the entire website. I feel like that would take just a little too long, but we are going to do a couple pages, hopefully. So I'm just going to start off by putting our logo in the center at the top, and then our headline we'll just put in the middle of the page and make that pretty large. And of course, the subtext will go underneath that. And then it's pretty common for the call to action to be underneath the headline and subtext. Now, as far as the navigation goes, let's go ahead and come up with the pages that are going to be on our site. So when I'm coming up with navigation, I like to place things in the order of highest importance. And so when somebody visits this site, the main thing we want them to do is to apply to become a pirate. So we're definitely going to need an apply now page. I think the second most important thing is to have actual information about what it's like to be a pirate. That way people that are still trying to decide if they want to do this or not can get some more information. I think we can just call that a pirate's life. And after that, Maybe we could let people know what's going on in the pirate world. So let's have a news and events section. And since we know that soon to be pirates as well as current pirates will probably visit this page, if nothing else to check on the news and events, it'd be good to have like a jobs listing page. That way we can feature jobs that are currently available in the fleet at this moment. And to wrap it up, we'll just have a contact page. Now, as far as navigation goes, the two main places that people mostly place it in are at the top of the site or on the side. Either can work pretty well, but I think for this side, I'd like to stick it on the side because like I mentioned, we do have that hierarchy of importance so this way people will see the most important things at the very top of the navigation first. And now we can start coming up with the visual concept for this. We're really trying to make an experience for people that see this. We want to give them a feel for what it's like to be a pirate. And so I think there's nothing better that represents pirates than the Jolly Roger, which is that iconic image of the skull with the crossbones behind it that you'd oftentimes see on pirate flags. So when people see this website for the first time, I think it'd be awesome to present them with this really large, super epic version of what is pretty much the most famous pirate symbol ever. So I'm thinking we maybe just stick this in the middle and make it really large. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use this vector graphic. We want this experience to feel real. So that means all of the imagery and stuff we use needs to be pretty realistic as well. So since we've got a good layout for our page now, let's go ahead and see what we can do as far as making this skull graphic. We're going to hop over to Photoshop, and I made an artboard that's just a little bigger than the size of our website. So I'm going to start by finding a couple of images for our skull and crossbones. And I ended up digging up this really cool image of a skull. And I also found some pretty cool images of bones that we could use for those crossbones behind the skull. Now we could just have this skull laying on a flat background or something like that, but I think just to get that pirate vibe in there, what would be really cool is to have this floating underwater. So maybe we can make this look like it's in some type of murky ocean with some light rays coming down from the top and part of the skull is kind of fading back into the darkness or something. I'm gonna start off by making the background a really deep blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint in some of those rays and I'll just be drawing white lines of various thicknesses in kind of a cone-like shape around this skull. Now we'll just give that a blur. And since these light rays are coming down from the surface of the ocean, they're gonna hit this skull and the skull is actually gonna cast a shadow where it's not allowing some of those light rays through. We'll just turn the intensity down on the rays a bit. And if you've ever been underwater, you'll know that if you've seen an object in the distance, it gets a little darker, a little more murky, and it starts to take on the color of the water surrounding it. So for the parts of these bones that I think will be further back in the scene, I'm gonna paint some darkness on those. 
So I darkened that up quite a bit. Now we need to do a little bit more work on these rays of light. The more water they have to travel through, the dimmer they're gonna get. And now what I wanna do is just add a little bit of extra shadow that's being cast from our skull and bones. And we're also gonna have some shadow around our entire scene where this light kind of fades out. And to make the scene look a little more cohesive, I'm gonna add a gradient map, set the ranges into kind of a bluish green tone, and then we can try some different blending modes to see what looks cool. And another effect we can add is to make things further in the background a little more blurry. That way this water looks kind of murky and dirty and it's not super clean. So I'm just gonna do that with a field blur. So the things in the foreground are gonna be sharp. And as we move to the back, they're gonna get a little fuzzy. And to help sell that dirty water effect even more, we can add some particulates in the water. And to do that, I'm just gonna use this dust texture that I have, adjust the blend mode, and then lower the opacity. You can see where we've painted some of this custom lighting. We've got some banding going on. And so to help that blend in and to make this water feel even more dirty, let's add a little smoke texture to it. I'm just gonna rotate it to where it looks like the light is coming from the top, stretch it out to feel the scene, and we'll change that blending mode to overlay. And now, just to make it look like these light rays are really affecting our bones, I'm gonna paint some highlights on them. And I'm gonna finish this up with a little bit of color grading. So as you can see, I brought in some more green tones and a little bit more yellow in the bones. I really think that helps it feel a little bit more dirty. And the blue was really calming before. And so adding in this green helps it feel a little bit more uneasy. So now we can just get rid of that temporary skull we had and place it in the one we just made. Quite a big difference if you ask me. In my mind, I see this as the top of our homepage. And if you scroll down, it's gonna take you to this A Pirate's Life section. And that's just gonna explain what it's like to be a pirate, give you that general information that you'd expect to find. So for the CTA, let's put learn more. And I'll go ahead and make all this white just so we can see it. And since we're going to that A Pirate's Life section, I think the headline could just be a longer version of that. So we'll just put A Pirate's Life for me. We want the subtext to emphasize and support the heading. So it needs to give a little bit of information about what it's like to be a pirate while still keeping things slightly mysterious so it makes you want to scroll down and see more. I thought something like this sounds pretty good. You know, I really don't like all this text covering up our skull image. I think it makes it feel just a little too busy and takes away from the experience of actually feeling like you're underwater. So I think we can just scoot it down towards the bottom. As far as the fonts go, my main goal is to just support our imagery and get something that feels very piratey. And it's pretty likely that pirates didn't use computers, so most of the time, they ended up writing things down by hand. So if we made our headline a handwritten style font, it could give it a little more personality, almost as if it was written by a pirate themselves. So I found this font, and I really liked it. It's got some nice texture to it, so it looks like it was written with a real pen sliding across paper and leaving some imperfect strokes. And for the font for the subtext, I want something that's not super modern. I want it to feel a little old. So I think we want to look for something that's a little lighter and with serifs. Now looking at our navigation, it's gonna be on the side, so we wanna pick a font that's not super wide because we don't want it sticking out too much. And we wanna give it a little bit of personality and make sure it matches the style that we have with our other fonts. I think we definitely wanna shrink them down some and spread them out vertically. That way we get a better separation between the pages and it's easier to make each individual one out. And one trick we can do to make our background skull feel a little bit larger is to shrink some of this text down here. Because if we make that smaller, the skull is just gonna feel larger in comparison. So let's go ahead and move our logo over right above our navigation. And since you're gonna be able to click on this logo and go back to the home page, it kind of makes sense to have that where the rest of the navigational elements are. Now as for our learn more call to action, I'd like to turn that into a button. And because a lot of elements like our skull and even this logo have rounded edges, I'm gonna round the edges of this button as well. Since this button is a navigational element, we could use the same font as we did for our sidebar navigation over here. But since on our sidebar, we just click the word to go somewhere. And here we're clicking a physical button. I think it would be nice to find a font that's similar, but that's still a little bit different. That way we just get some visual separation between these elements. You can see this is the font I chose. It's pretty similar to what we had before, but it's different enough to make it stand out. And what we could really use here is some accent colors. We're using a lot of greens and blues in our graphic right now, and so I think it makes sense to pick something for our accent that's on the other end of the color spectrum, and that would generally be some type of yellow. And since pirating is all about treasure, pushing that towards a golden color would make perfect sense. And I know I definitely want this handwritten script in that color, because we really want to draw people's attention to that. And I think it also makes sense for our learn more text to be that accent color. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and make the logo the color as well, just so it separates it from some of these other page buttons. Down here though, our subtext seems to be drawing a little too much attention away from the heading. So to fix that, I'm just gonna make this a little transparent. I think I'll do the same thing for the border around the button. As far as the design goes, I think that's pretty much it for the home page. But now what I think would be really awesome is to add some animation to this. Maybe we could have the bones floating a little bit in the water, and we definitely wanna make these light rays move and shimmer. And it'd be cool to have some of these particles fall down like they're sinking to the bottom of the ocean. 
So basically what I did was just break down our background image into separate parts and I reassembled that back into After Effects and I also added in our UI as separate elements as well. So I think the first thing I'd like to start with is making these bones look like they're floating in the water. So I'm going to go into the layer that I've got all the background elements on. We want to start in a pretty neutral position and then we want to move the pieces a little bit in one direction and then a little bit in another direction and then back to the neutral position. That way the entire thing can loop seamlessly. And you'll notice I tried to move the pieces in slightly different directions, that way they felt independent of each other. If we were to see this in real life, we would see a perspective shift as these pieces moved around. And we just don't see that here because they're just like pieces of paper on top of each other. So what we can do to remedy that is add some artificial depth to this. And the way we do that is by creating a depth map. And all a depth map is, is a 2D representation of a 3D object. So basically the way it works is it's a black and white image and areas that are painted pure white are things that are considered closest to the viewer. And then areas that are painted pure black are areas that are far away from the viewer. And so what we need to do is paint a grayscale image of our skeleton where the parts of it that are closer to us are lighter and the parts that are further away from us are more dark. And now that we've kind of got that roughed in, we're just going to blur the entire thing. And that way, all those separate areas we just painted will be nicely blended together and we'll get some smooth transitions. So we can just take that map and drag that into our scene, parent this map to the skull first. That way, everywhere the skull moves, the map will move as well. And then we can hide that because we don't really need to see it. And I'm going to give our skull a displacement map effect and we're going to tell it to use that depth map we just created. And so now I can actually spin the skull left and right and it actually looks a little 3D. You can see there are some distortions, which means our map isn't perfect, but as long as we don't tilt this too much, you shouldn't be able to see them too bad. And adding in those depth maps to the rest of our bones and adjusting the motion just a little bit, we have something that looks like this. Mainly, I just slowed things down some, just so it'd feel a bit smoother, and I also made some minor adjustments to the depth map. Now at this point, I think we can go ahead and start animating our lights. At the moment, we only have one image for our light rays. So in order to make those animate, I'm just gonna make a few more versions of these light rays that all be different from each other, and we can just fade from one to another, and that'll give the sense of movement. So you can see how those rays fading in and out of each other helps mimic the effect of the ocean shaping the light as it travels through it. Now what we want is to make these particles look like they're floating downwards. And I think a good way to do that is to just make a giant sheet of them and then we can just move that sheet down across this image and fade it out towards the bottom. Here's our sheet of particles, so I'm just going to expand the canvas and then make some duplicates of this. And then I'm just going to rotate a few of these just to prevent any weird seams or patterns showing up. And lastly, I'm just going to go in and paint away some of the specs just to add a little more variation as well. We'll just drop that into our scene and change the blend mode to screen. Lower the opacity a bit and now we'll just animate it. As you can see, as the noise falls down right now, it kind of feels flat and it doesn't really fade out into any of this darkness. So let's fix that. I'm just going to stick this in a new composition. That way we have those particles isolated and I'm just going to add a black gradient on the bottom of this. Now you can see those particles fade out towards the bottom. I'd also like to add some random cloudiness to these particles. That way they fade out at random times as they fall down. So I just added a cloud texture here and I'm going to make that a little softer and then quite a bit bigger. And now I'm going to use that as a mask for our particles. So what that'll do is everywhere there was black in the cloud texture, the particles won't be visible. And everywhere that was white, they will. So as you can see, our particles are falling nice and smoothly now. They disappear at random spots throughout their journey. And that just gives the effect that the light is affecting them in different ways as they move through the water. And the very last thing I'd like to do is make those particles feel like they're flowing back and forth as they fall. So I'm just going to turn off our mask for just a second so we can see them better. And then I'm going to add a ripple effect to the particles. That gives us this really cool effect, like they're moving back and forth in the water. And they're not just all falling perfectly straight down in the same direction. And guys, here's our final result for this. We've got these cool bones just floating in the water. These awesome light rays that are just changing directions and shining in different ways. And then of course our particles that are just slowly falling towards the bottom of the ocean. And ideally, we would just export this as a video and that video could be used as the background for our website. So as soon as you open up the site, I think it'd be really cool if this background video faded in from black. Something like this, where you barely see the light rays first and then that skull is slowly revealed. I think that some of these other elements like the logo and the nav and even some of this text down here in the button could also fade in with the background. So I did that and I also added a little bit of movement to those. That way the nav comes in from the right and the text down here comes in from the bottom. And it gives us this really cool effect of framing the shot as the skull comes in. Right now everything fades in except for our main title and what I think would be really cool there instead of just a simple fade is to make it look like it's actually being handwritten in. So to do that, I'm just going to stick it on a separate layer and now I'll just trace over these letters with a pen tool. And I tried to trace over those letters in a way that looked like I was writing it out by hand. 
So I just added a trim path to that. And what that's gonna let us do is make it look like this stroke is actually being drawn onto the canvas. And now we can use our new stroke layer as a mask for our text. And that gives us this really cool handwritten effect. And all of that put together gives us this. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and jump back into Figma. I think now I'd like to design one of these other pages we have here. And I feel like this fleet jobs might be interesting to do. So I made a fresh page with just the navigation and the logo. As far as what this page will be, if you've ever seen a company website, you'll usually see a section that says now hiring. It's a place to feature major jobs for the organization. So most likely there's not gonna be like a ton of them, maybe 10 to 15 max. And that's exactly what I think this page could be. And with that, let's start figuring out some content for this. So for every job listed on this page, I imagine we'll need some type of title, definitely have the salary on there, and probably just some type of see more button. Cause since we're gonna be having multiple jobs on this page, I don't think we should put all of the details for every single job here. It'd probably be better just to have a list of items. And then you can just click on one of those items and it'll pull you up to a new page with all the information about that specific job. So as far as the layout for this, we know there's not gonna be a ton of jobs listed here. If there were, we might do something that's a little more compact, maybe grid-like so you can easily scroll through everything to see a large Large number of items. But like I said, since we only have a handful of jobs that'll be listed here, we could probably get away with doing something a little more graphical and each job can take up a bit more of the screen. One thing that's actually pretty common in web design is to use a system called a carousel. I'm sure you've probably seen it before. It basically just has an image with maybe some controls on each side that lets you swipe through left or right and see other images in the sequence. And I feel like we could use a system like this for our job list. But instead of just having one job show at a time, I'd like to show multiple ones. And remember, these are jobs for people that are higher up in the organization to take on. They're pretty esteemed jobs. And so we want to present them in a way that kind of lifts them up and gives them a bit of prestige. I think the best way to do that is with images. And since we're talking about pirates here, I think the first job we should tackle would be some type of treasurer. So I dug up this image of a treasure chest, and that's pretty fitting to describe a treasure job, because that's just somebody that takes care of all the finances and money of an organization. So I think what we want to do is treat each of these blocks as a unit. And so that means all the job's information will be contained within that single unit. So for example, the title of this job would maybe go directly above it, and the salary could go maybe beneath it. I'm going to grab this button we made earlier and put that down here. I'm just gonna say see details on that. And applying that same formatting to our other two blocks, you can see we have a nice list of jobs that we can just scroll through, get the main information for, and dig deeper if we wanna know more about that particular job. Now as for the background, a solid black is fine, but it's not that interesting. And I honestly just really like that underwater feel we got from our homepage, and I'd like to transfer that over to this new page somehow. And maybe one way to do that is instead of going to a completely new page for this job list, maybe we could just have these items appear on top of our original homepage. So basically, if you just clicked on that jobs tab on the homepage, all of the other homepage elements we don't need would just go away, and our new list of jobs would just appear on top of this. Now, I definitely don't like these square images so much, so maybe we could try something a little softer and go with a circle. And one thing to think about is since we are kind of transitioning between our homepage and this page, I think it would be nice if we had some type of change in the background that went along with that transition. So maybe what we could do is when we go to this new page, the background can actually move backwards a little bit and get blurry, kind of like some depth of field type stuff going on. And then our jobs will appear over top of that like they're closer to us in the foreground. And maybe just to create a little extra separation, we can darken the background as well. So I'd like to find a way to make these objects feel like they're a part of the same scene as our background. For example, in this image, we don't really need this black part. So if we made that transparent, it would allow us to see some of the background behind it and maybe make this whole thing feel just a bit more cohesive. I think that's actually really cool because it helps us really separate the image towards the middle where we need it the most. And then it just kind of fades away into the background to become one with the scene. I like to make the title of this a little bit bigger too. And as for the salary, I think we probably need to add something like per year underneath it. That way it's just crystal clear that this number is your yearly salary. And I kind of feel like our see details button is a little too low right now. It's one of the main call to actions on this page. And so we want people to be able to see it easily. So I think we'll want to scoot all of this stuff up a bit. And I really don't want to scoot the image up that much, mainly because it's in the center right now. I feel like that's just a very good point for it to be seen visually. Maybe we could just try a bit of a different shape. So maybe I could just add a couple points right here along the edges and then just move this bottom point up so it's not covering up any of the number. 
Let's make our salary a bit bigger since we really want to entice these pirates with all the money they're going to be getting. And I'm actually going to make our C details button have a solid background. And now that is a different style than the button we had on our homepage. And usually you want to be consistent with the styling of your buttons. But in this case, I think it's okay because this button will actually take you to a separate page. Whereas the button on our homepage was just going to automatically scroll the page down so you could see more information. So with those having different functions, I think it's okay to have them visually look a little bit different. And one thing we might want to think about is what happens if a job title is a little bit longer than this or has multiple parts to it. For example, if this job was actually full fleet treasurer, meaning this was the treasurer for the entire fleet. So I think for something like this, we could leave the core title pretty big and the more specific title we can make smaller. And I actually think this might be a good opportunity to pull in some of that handwritten text we use on the homepage and mirror that here. We can make our top heading in the handwritten font with that same gold color. And I actually think that makes for pretty good hierarchy because you instantly see that this is for a treasurer position and our text above gives you more information about what type of treasurer that is. And I think I'll make our per year text that same yellow color too. I feel like the job in the center of the page really needs to take up almost all of your attention because we want that to feel grand and enticing. So I think we could display the jobs on the side a little bit differently than we do the central one. I don't think we need the see details button and I really don't even think we need the salary. And I'd even like to tone these down just a little bit more. So what if we made them a bit smaller, maybe even move our name inside of the circle. What I think would be really cool is since this is actually smaller, maybe we can make it look like it's pushed further into the background than our foreground job here. And to do that, we can blur it a little bit and then darken it up some. And now let's go ahead and fill in these other two jobs with our own images and titles. And so I added in a gunner job, somebody that's mainly responsible for cannon fire, as well as an explosives technician, which would handle everything that explodes. Our navigation is getting a little hard to see right now. So I think we could fix that just by adding a small gradient behind it. And of course, we'll want to match that on the other side as well. And so the way I imagine this working is you should be able to click and drag and everything we see in our current job will transform into a version that looks like this. And the next job up will transform from its current version into this central format. And because we're making the website, we know that clicking and dragging is something you can do. But for somebody seeing it for the very first time, it may not be terribly obvious. So in these types of situations, it's usually good to add a secondary control element that people can easily see and recognize. And in this case, I'm just going to add an arrow on either side of the main title. And that's a symbol pretty much everybody understands. If you click the right arrow, you see the next job on the right. If you click the left one, you see the job on the left. And another visual cue that it's usually good to give people when you're using some type of carousel like this is some type of graphic that shows them what position in the carousel they're currently at. And we can do that really easily just with a system of dots. Each dot represents an item in the carousel. An item we're currently on will be highlighted our main gold color. And all these other dots are just going to be white and slightly transparent. And I also made those a bit smaller as well. So now let's just hop back over into After Effects and animate the new page we just made. I started off by making a blank circle that warps into that new bubble shape that we had. And we'll use that animated shape as a mask for our treasure chest image. And we'll get our text in here as well and animate that. And that text will start out small and get bigger as our image grows. And then we'll get our salary dropping down like that. And of course, we'll animate it in that script text as well. Now we'll go back to our home page. And you remember that in the transition between this and the jobs page, we wanted all of these elements to fade away, the skull to get smaller, and the whole thing to get darker. And we can add our job bubble on top of that. The transition is a little harsh right now, so we need to soften that up. So when it first comes in, it's going to be pretty small, fairly blurred, and slightly transparent. And with all that put together, that gives us our final result. So I think we've got two really cool pages designed right now, but I'd like to do one more. And so I think the last page we're going to do is the page you go to when you click on the C details for this treasurer job. And I think it would be cool if when you clicked on this see details button, we kind of zoom in on this treasure chest and it becomes the main image for this page. So I'm gonna get rid of the items we don't need here. We'll get rid of this mask we have around the chest and we'll make it bigger so it fills up the page. We'll move this text up some, and maybe even make it a bit bigger. We obviously don't want these really sharp cut off corners. So I'm gonna feather the edges here, just like we did in this background area. And just from looking at this, it almost gives the illusion that there's some type of spotlight shining down on this thing. So maybe we could even add some more light rays here just to mirror those that we had in the other screens. And as for the rest of this page, I think we need to add some content. We've already got the name and the salary. In addition to that, we're probably gonna have some benefits, a description of the job, requirements that you need to meet to be able to apply for this job, as well as maybe the location that you're gonna be performing this job in. So as far as how we lay these out on the page, I think since we have the salary right here, we might as well put the benefits directly underneath that, since oftentimes those types of things are tied together. And of course, a luxurious pirate job like this is gonna come with really good benefits. For example, a vision plan, and we need a dental plan too. And since this is a pretty dangerous job, if you do happen to land it, you're gonna be eligible for hazard pay. 
And since we don't have a lot of content for this section, I'm gonna place these horizontally instead of vertically. And maybe we can find some icons to represent each one of these. I've got a tooth for our dental plan, a sword to represent our hazard pay, and I think we can make a little eye patch for our vision plan. I think we should probably put these in some type of container, maybe just a simple circle. And I think a cool way to combine this section with our salary section up here is just to add a plus in between them. That way people know that you get the salary plus these benefits. So we've taken care of the benefits, and now let's do the job description. We'll just start with the word description, and I'll just paste in a little copy I wrote. You can pause and read that if you'd like to. And I think we should make this font the same font we used for our subtext in the homepage. And let's move on to the requirements section. And I think I'm just gonna call this qualifications. And again, I've just made a few things up to put there. And since our qualifications are kind of like a checklist, I'll put a little box beside each one. And a lot of times when you're designing sites, you wanna break up the flow a little bit. So instead of just continuing with all of our content down the middle, I think we could probably put both of these sections on the same line. And the information just goes together really well. And it looks like the last piece of content we need is the location. And since pirating is pretty much a worldwide job since you're selling everywhere, instead of just listing a bunch of locations that this job would require you to be at, maybe we could communicate that information better with some type of map. And now we can just visually show which areas that this job requires you to be at. And just to wrap this section up, I'm gonna add some subtext here just to let people know that the marked regions are where they're gonna be spending most of their time. And just to end off this page, I'm gonna put a final call to action. And that'll simply give you a link to apply for this job. I'm gonna stick that same application button right at the top of the header. That way, if somebody opens the page and they immediately wanna see where to apply at, it's in an easy to spot place. Also, this page is kind of a pop-up. It's not really a main page that we go to. So I'm gonna get rid of our navigation over here. And I'm just gonna replace that with an X. That way you can click that, close out this page as a pop-up, and you'll be taken directly back to that last page we designed with all the jobs listed there. And since we always wanna make it easier for the user to navigate the site, on the last page, if you remember how we put those arrows on there, that way you could click them and see the next job, I think we could probably mirror that here. So we can just add in some arrows, the job titles that each of those arrows will take you to, and maybe even the salaries associated with those jobs. And this will just give people a really easy way to navigate throughout the job carousel without having to leave this page and go back to our previous page and then once again open up another pop-up page. One thing I did realize though, if you just open up this page normally, maybe you wouldn't understand that there's content below this. So we need to put in some type of element that guides people's eyes downward. And if there's one thing that all pirates should be good at following, it's a map. So I think what we could do is turn this entire page into a treasure map. Maybe we could follow just a single dotted line from the very top all the way throughout the content and ending up in this apply button down below. Now we'll just make that a dotted line. And playing off that map idea, maybe we could even make the background look like it's part of a map as well. And I found this really cool vector asset of a topographical view of some land. So I just made that a bit bigger and we're gonna tone it down some. But now that we have this, I do think we need to add a little more texture to the background. It's just a bit too flat right now. I found this really cool rusty texture and I liked it a lot because some of these shapes actually remind me of land masses. So I'll just make this a little bigger, change the blend mode to luminosity, that way the color doesn't affect anything, and we'll turn down the opacity. And now to finally bring this whole thing together, I'm gonna add a little bit of lighting to the top of this page, which means changing the background color to better match some of those other pages we designed, fading out the top and the bottom of this page with gradients, and I also adjusted the color of the spotlight to better match the whole scene. And finally, I changed the blending mode of our dotted map line from normal to overlay. And that just helps it blend better with the changes in lighting and color of the background. I think as far as animation goes on this page, I wanna keep it pretty simple. One cool thing I think we could do is as we're scrolling on this page, give the background a parallax effect. And that just means our actual content will scroll at a normal speed and the background will scroll slower. And this just gives the illusion of depth. So I'll just quickly do that animation. And guys, here's our final result. So if you enjoyed this, give this video a like, and if we hit 1,000 likes, I'm gonna make a full web series covering the entire web design process from start to finish, just like you would for a real client. You can check out some of my other videos here. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, and make sure to ring that bell, that way you'll be notified when I actually do post a video. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.